So hey guys, welcome, welcome back again to my channel. My name is Theo. I am a registered nurse currently practicing here in Australia, and I have a special guest. And I will let him introduce himself. But yeah, if you are looking to move from Nigeria to Australia, especially if you're a registered pharmacist, you've come to the right video because you're gonna get all the information you need. So yeah, let's hear from my guest. Hello everyone, my name is Adi Olua. I'm a registered pharmacist in Australia. I moved to Australia April this year. I moved to Australia on an employer-sponsored visa. So the journey was a little bit long. I started the journey January last year, January 2023. I started the whole process of... Now you say it's very long. Hey! It was long now. <laughs> It was it wasn't even January. It was March. Like it was March. I paid. I started the whole process. January, I was still preparing for everything. How to like I was still gathering informations and all. January, so March, I started the whole process. I paid for the first thing. That's the eligibility assessment. My sister is a registered nurse. I've been following nurse Dale for a long time because of my sister. <laughs> oh, that's good. So she that time she wanted to move to the UK. So that was when I saw Nosdeo's video that time. Nosdeo and Nanel, two of them, oh, both of yeah, them, I'm following them <laughs> because of my sister. It was mainly because of my sister. Oh, she's, in, she's in UK now. Yeah, she has gone since 2022. Oh, that's good. Thank God. Yeah. So, we'll drag her here. Don't worry. <laughs> so that's when I started following Nosdeo. So all the information and all. I was the one, I was helping my sister to apply submitting applications for a UK nursing jobs and everything that time. So that was how I was following us there and all that. So after my sister went, she called me, she asked me, okay, what do you want to do now? Oh, will you come to UK to join me? Or, or do you consider another country? I told her, who? Uh, this is UK, man. I don't like UK. <laughs> I can't go to UK, like... I can't go to UK, I will not go to start doing masters and all those stuff. Yeah. Because to go to UK as a pharmacist is tough. OSPAP yeah. involves OSPAP process and all. And I checked the OSPAP that time. They said they were fully booked in 2025. I said, no, I can't do this. When you checked in 2023? Yeah, they said they were fully they booked in 2025. Yeah. No. So uh, I just checked it. I said, okay. It's like this UK won't work for me. And I didn't even want to go to UK before. So I started considering other countries like Canada and all. Then someone told me about Australia. <laughs> yeah, at my workplace, the person just said, ah, uh, this thing, can't you just consider Australia now that you just have to write one exam and you go and you employ a even sponsor you and all. I said, ah, how am I going to do this? So I just, I followed it up. I found someone, I found a Nigerian in Australia, a Nigerian pharmacist in Australia. So I connected to him on LinkedIn. So I sent a message, started asking, asking different questions. So I started getting all the information and all about the, about the Australian route. So that's when I started preparing. Then I called my friend. This is my friend that is at my back. I don't know what he's even doing there. I called <laughs> him. I told him that, ah. So, yeah, because he was considering UK, he has he had already want, he wanted to start the process and everything for school in UK, mm. masters and all. So I told him that ah, guy, we will just we will try this Australia stuff now. Ah, <laughs> this Australia stuff, it be like say it didn't make sense. So, <laughs> you just like why you just like why exam? You not to read, you go read for the exam now. So that's when we just started to talk to him. We just agreed that ah, let's do this thing. Like we started checking for jobs, the pay and everything. The opportunities so we just do that thing that okay let's try this stuff so that's when we paid an um, eligibility assessments i mean it's like stating the process like that too. Mm. so, so the first thing is where would you find the eligibility assessments okay yeah eligibility assessment you find it at the australian pharmacist council okay so if we just go on google and type australia pharmacy council yeah google. yeah websites everything is there eligibility assessment and all I paid the eligibility assessment fee. How much was it? it cost about 1,310 Australian dollars. Wait, 1,310 Australian. How much was that in Naira? Uh, that time, that time it was like 660,000, 660,000 Naira. Good, but but now it's 1.6. It's like 1.4, 1.5. 1.5. 1.5. 
1.4, 1.5 million now. Yeah. So exchange rate is affecting everything that time. Everything. Yeah. That was the amount I paid for the eligibility assessment. For the eligibility assessment, basically just to confirm that you hold a registration in your country. Yeah. So they will ask for your registered license, they will ask for your birth certificate, they will ask for your transcript. Your so would, you, transcript. would your school send it directly to them or you have to upload it? You can upload it or your school can send it anyone. Okay. Anyone is acceptable. But it's just the transcript must have the stamp of the school and the signature of the school. So if you have the original one with you, you can send it. You or you can just pay your school to send it. Yeah, what do you say? Do you, have to, do you have to verify the document? You know this verification. No, no, you don't need to certify the document. Okay. The, that certification is another stage. That's okay, another okay. stage. Okay. So in the beginning, you don't need to certify anything, just send it. So after you send it, basically now it takes like they said it takes like eight to twelve weeks, but most of the time it takes shorter than that period because mine was just like four weeks so they'll just tell you that okay you are eligible to sit for the exam okay so send you a mail that congratulations you are eligible to sit for the exam mm -hmm. so after that you register for the exam you pay for the exam so the exam fee is 2230 australian, australian. yeah okay. see that time it was like it was about 1.2 million at uh, that time <laughs> but that is like two point two point something million now after you pay for the exam but you can't write the exam in nigeria oh okay yeah, nigeria, they don't have a center in nigeria although it's tps in view centers but they okay. don't register What's the name of the exam? okay the name of the exam is, is caps the short form is caps k-a-p-s k-a-p-s okay that's fine yeah caps so but there is a new development now Mm -hmm. This November is going to be the last people that write caps. Okay. This November is one. Yeah. From next year, it's going to be opera. They've changed it to opera. Mm. So it's, it's changed. Everything is on the APC website, Australian Pharmacies, Pharmacy Council website. Everything is there. So they've changed it to opera now. So the exam is written three times a year within March, July, and November mm -hmm. each year. I wrote the exam in Ghana. I had to go to oh, Ghana so there's a center in Ghana. Yeah, there's a center in Ghana. Oh, that's not bad now. I was thinking maybe you have to try yeah. to write the right No, no, no. There's a center oh, in Ghana. Ghana so. Fine, we can do it. <laughs> so, we went, <laughs> so we went to Ghana to write the exam. Yeah, my friend and I went to Ghana to write the exam. At least people take vacation then. <laughs> yeah, after, after vacation. Ah, I took vacation after the exam. We stayed for a week in Ghana. The exam was just one day. We stayed for a whole week. So we and you don't need to visit that to visit Ghana, Ghana right? Yeah, you don't need visa. Ghana is visa free. Oh, so you just and pay for flights. You just book your flight. Some people took bus. Some people that yeah. would the exam took bus from Lagos. Maybe we took flights. I didn't want to take bus. No, I it's, it's actually very. Yeah. I think it's like one full day from Lagos. Yeah, or yeah, like it's a full day. So I didn't want to. I didn't want to waste time. I just forty minutes by by flight. Two, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then after that, about two weeks later, the results came out. So. You saw we passed and everything, so we had to write. What's the exam? Like, ah. for your standard, you are, you are a registered pharmacist. What do you think that the exam is very difficult? Like, how many days did you prepare for the exam? What's your advice if somebody wants to write that exam? My advice is start your preparation early and don't depend mainly on past questions and recalls because some things recalls, recalls are like questions from the other exams that have been. I've been coming out regularly, regularly because sometimes they bring fresh questions. So mm -hmm. uh, recalls help too because if you just know the answer, if you know the answer like that, if you check the recalls and everything. So, but don't base your stuff on just recalls only. Read, get the foundation and everything. Because some people, it has been a long time they've left pharmacy school, so they might not remember a lot of things. So they, they should just like read and mm -hmm. get the foundation right again. Then before they, they start checking recalls and all. So, uh it's the exam was not that tough if you prepare for it it yeah. wasn't tough to be honest although there was a paper that was aiming for our life <laughs> <There was, laughs> the paper too it was tough my friend you were just sighing throughout the exam yeah so paper one paper one we finished it immediately it was fast my friend used 30 minutes to finish paper one paper of two hours finished it in 30 minutes so, so 
that was multiple choice. It's all multiple choice. Okay. It's not that you have to write anything. You don't have to write anything. So choose. So after that, our results came out. Then we paid for PTE. That was piercing test of English. We wrote PTE. Yeah, instead of writing I wrote. We had PT it was easier, so we went, we opted Please. for PT. I probably have written two of them. I read higher than PT. PT is definitely easier. So for those so, who don't know what PT is, it is like your IELTS, so it's like an English exam. So if you don't want to write IELTS, you have to sit for PT, any of them, but you have to do an English test. Yeah. Immediately our results came out. We went for PT. The next two weeks, like the registration date was the exam date was the next two weeks after our results came out. The PT exam. First week we didn't even do anything. We were just <laughs> chilling. Then the second week we started reading for the PT. So it's just one week we used to prepare for PT and we passed. Just one week. What what so, score you needed for for PT? And we just in, needed 65, 65 in, in all the bands in each okay. band. Yeah. I think just 65 would be equivalent to seven in ILTS. So although we got way more than that, but. Mm-hmm. The, that's the that's what was needed. Um, there's something we used to do after the exam and the English test. We we'll do the APRA registration. I'm sure you did it too, because yeah. for everybody, yeah. So we did the APRA. We submitted. When I was even doing the interview, we've not done an APRA registration at that time. And they gave you interview. Yeah, what? like most have APRA registration. Normally, it's pretty bad. They just decided to give us even after the like after the old stuff. The guy told me that normally uh, they used to. Make sure the candidate has apply registration before yeah. they even got the interview. Yeah. That our ours was just a different case, a special uh, case. Yeah, I choose him. <laughs> <laughs> eh? So, like, even so with, was, if nobody will even look at you, that's one of the requirements. Yeah, yeah. So, because all those places that when they ask, do you have a prior registration? I usually put no there. So, I was even surprised I even got those interview invites in the first place. All those interview invites. So, after that, we are, I applied for the APA. We were waiting for it to come out. Then, when I gave them the registration, they sent contracts. I signed the contract and I started visa processing. And that we, I found myself in Australia. We never <laughs> reached Australia. Wait. So, one question Do you need any years of experience before you can move to Australia? Yeah. For example, the EOI, if you want to submit EOI, Experience gives points. If you have yeah. five years experience, that's extra five points and all. Mm-hmm. Then, if you want to go with an employer sponsor visa, at least this requires you to have at least two years of experience. What of for your application to APRA or yeah, or to write the exam or APRA? No, they don't care about experience. Those ones. Don't so care APRA about too does not require any experience. No, they don't require. That experience. means it's not. That means experience is not really necessary. You know what? Yeah, really because some employers are happy to take you without. I mean, of course, they will prefer somebody. Any anyway, if you bring yeah, some they'll, as they'll, experience and without, they will they'll get to, it. yeah, they will prefer but some. If, as long as APRA does not, you know why? Because we nurses, APRA requires you to have a level of experience before they will even register you as a nurse. No, no, no. It so there is no way you can cut. You can't cut it off at all. The thing is that to have a license because APRA and all those this thing will require your license from your country. Yeah. Your so for you to have a license, you must have done intention before you can give you license. But you so, don't need to do NYC before you can get license. No, no, no. The internship counts as the experience. Okay, so that's one so year. It counts internship as one year experience. So that's okay. Different. That's not bad. So when you apply for APRA, what and what did you submit to APRA? Different documents. Submitted CV. You submitted transcript again. Yes. Mm-hmm. Then they also send certificate of good standing. So from, all those. From your license board, you know, in UK. Yeah, from Pharmacy Council of Nigeria. Yeah. They sent it directly to Africa. Yeah, they sent it directly to them. I just we just paid for it. How, we just paid for it. How, they sent it to them directly. It was hundred thousand naira. Yeah, okay, hundred thousand. You paid it to your to board in Nigeria. Yeah, to PCN oh. Pharmacy Council of Nigeria. So we just paid it and they sent it to them. They told us they already have their stuff. I I was asking that are uh, they not supposed to know? We had to send it to or something. They, they just told me not to worry. That's I told them Australia. They knew where they were sending it to. So we just sent it to them. Then we paid for the upper. Uh, we paid three eighty one Australian dollars. Yeah, for the upper registration. That, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. For upper, we have to we have to certify our documents. We certified our our results, our caps results, our exam results. We certified our PT results. 
then we also certified the five pt results and yeah they, i don't when know i don't know check the number online they could easily check it i don't know why they put us to certify because they even asked us for the number we like we filled the number in yeah, and they still asked us to certify it again now I was only there. I don't think I I, was, mine, Sha. I, didn't, I don't think I, I was did. surprised too. So when we certified our certificates, our degree certificates too. Uh, those were, I think those were like three documents. Then we certified our passports, yeah. Photo behind document. Our international, they, said, they told us we had to certify it. Uh, for How formats. long did the whole APRA thing take after submitting yeah. the documents? Yeah, it took, like, it took like a month. Okay. Yeah, it took like a month. After submitting, okay. and they sent the stuff. Then that's that's like that basically everything. <laughs>